So how many years are we celebrating? 50. 50, yay! And today is also my 50th birthday. So, so there's something magic about 2024 and 1974, and I feel like when I um, was in search um, and I found that out, I was like, there we go. And I can't think of a better place to celebrate. Um, and you might remember this when you were young. Here's the church. Remember that? Here's the steeple. Open the doors. And here's the people. So these are the words by Margaret Weiss. The congregation is not only a steeple above the tree line, streets and cars. Rather, it is a people proclaiming to the wor world that we're here for the work of healing and of justice. The church is not walls and stone built upon stone, held together by mortar, but, but rather by persons, linked with persons, all ages and genders and abilities, a community built on the foundation of reason, faith, and love. When I was a young girl, one of my favorite things to do was to go to church. It was to sing music. And this service has been full of it. I used to love when I sat with my mom in the pew. My feet were dangling, and we hovered over our hymn books. She had this voice, and we would join and blend on those hosannas. And here we blend on love will guide us, right? And later I sang in the children's choir and the adult choir. And even as a high schooler, there was something heavenly about joining my voice with others. The effort of my voice combined with all those different parts created a sacred whole. It was something I couldn't achieve on my own. So as a seeker, that's what I keep seeking, is that sense of wholeness. I find it in the connection, and I find it in this place, where we hit those notes just so. Unitarian. <laughs> when someone's candle of joy, our bonfire of candle joys, moves us so deeply, there are so many individual voices in this sanctuary. We each have our pitch and timing. Yet our voice, our voices somehow come out to be something bigger, bigger than ourselves. All of our individual gifts make this community whole, whether we're on Zoom, serving at the community table, running a thrift sale, bringing a meal to a family in need, our gifts touch the lives of others. So here we are on this Sunday morning. We each have our hopes, our dreams. We're thinking about where we're going to go to lunch or what we're going to do later today. But here in this moment, we are one, one energy, one place, one people. We walk our own paths to enlightenment Yet somehow along the way, we look outside ourselves for support to each other, for wisdom, companionship, and we are touched, and in turn, people are touched by us. Richard Gilbert writes that worship is understood as the celebration of life. It is generally accepted in most Unitarian Universalist congregations today that we think of worship as worth shaping, to shape something of worth. And that blows the mind of a lot of people who are not Unitarian Universalists. They're like, how do all you people, all your different beliefs, what do you do? How do you get along? And I'm like, well, it's interesting. <laughs> Each Sunday is different. And the meaning of worth suggests the purpose of worshiping is to come to be equal to or turn toward the highest or the best of values. This is what we do here. We celebrate life. We celebrate with each other. And the word religion comes from the Latin word relegare, that which binds us together. So worship is a binding together, a celebration of life and community. We're not here just for our own joys and concerns. We're here to be changed and to change the status quo, to wake up to make a difference, and to live. The mission of this congregation is to provide a liberal religious environment that promotes personal and spiritual growth for adults and children in a caring community. And how, how many years have we done it? 
50, woo! How many more years are we gonna do it? 50 more! <laughs> That's right. And we're a community that looks out for one another. We're also a community that looks for our actions to go out into the world, to make a change, to make a difference. Some of us come to church to sing. There's a choir meeting after service, if you wanna know. To be inspired, to be together. We also come to this place to make a difference for ourselves and for others. We are not isolated beings. And this small little blue planet holds life, life as we know it. So we are on this planet together. We're in this congregation together. The poet Annie Dillard says, when people come to church, they should not be handed an order of service with a smile. So take note, greeters. <laughs> but they should be given hard hats and life preservers because church should be a dangerous place, a zone of risk, a place of new birth and new life where we confront ourselves with who we truly are and who the church is calling us to become. And we're a congregation that has so many dreams for the future. I love when I hear on this video what we feel inspired to do. And I think about all the people in this community. We, we are 270 people, but so many people in this congregation make a difference out in the world. You know, our youth go out and volunteer. You know, we have people at the county board and so many different things that we do. And it's a tradition that is the priesthood of all believers which means that each person's voice makes a difference. You don't need me to stand up here to tell you what to believe, you know, deep in that seed, that heart that is seeking. And so let's stop and think for a minute. We come here to this place because it reflects the dreams of our heart. And it's all the people that came before us and it's all the people now, and it's all the people in the future that we're building this place for. You know, a season of stewardship is a season of gifts, and it runs due to your gifts, your money. And it's not simply about the amount that we give, it is the meaning that it brings for us. We live out our values and our volunteer time, singing for the choir, you know, some of us buy local because we believe in supporting our community. Some of us shop at the farmer's market so we can support, you know, local farmers. We make an ethical choice with our money, and that money has an effect. And I think many of us in, our, in this economy especially have learned to use our money wisely. Our money can be an extension of what we believe. Many Unitarian Universalists believe that we are building the kingdom, and that's a reference to the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of awesomeness, the kingdom of beloved community, the king of kicking Heine when we need to, <laughs> and showing up and making a difference right now. Not for the world to come, not for some savior that'll sweep in and sweep us off our feet, but we are the ones who are here to save ourselves and to save each other. And to do that, it takes all of us. So remember the slow slogan, act locally, think globally. It begins at grassroots. Like we think about our congregation right here. We're smack right in the middle of downtown. We often focus on how we raise our children, our spirituality, our religious education. And Christ Church Cathedral right there across the street is also a part of our community. We're partnering with them in April with the Red Cross um, blood drive if you wanna sign up. The Beacon House, Sojourner, Community House, the Randall Park neighborhood. You can think of all of these as a part of that concentric ripple that goes out. Um, Gilbert says, imagine a circle within a circle. The center circle is worship the celebration of what we experience and love, and out of that center grows what we think and do as individuals in a community, our connectedness with cosmos, world history, and each other is celebrated here. This congregation is a microcosm of the beloved community 
where we embody love and justice. So how do we do that? We vote. <laughs> we go out and vote in November. We vote at our annual meeting. We vote to call our budget. We vote to call our board. So we know that this congregation, we have financial circumstances that vary. Some people can afford a pledge of a certain amount, and we are grateful. Some can and will make pledges higher than that, and again, we are grateful. It doesn't matter the amount. It matters what it means to you. And it matters that we as a congregation can keep on being a place that saves lives. And when I say saves lives, I've had someone come to this congregation and said, when I heard the opening statement, you are welcome here, and all the identities and my identity was there, they felt that their wife, life was worth living. Here as a minister, I have sat with people thanks to you. I have sat with a transgender scared teen and offered them a place to stay for the night because of you. We have three AA groups that meet here that also saves lives because of you. There is so much that we do here that you don't see, you don't know because this place exists and because it changes all of you and it changes me. And I'm so grateful to be here as your minister. And so when you think about our pledge, everybody's like, can you please shut up about the pledge already? <laughs> And like NPR, we keep talking about it because we care about this congregation. We want it to be here. And, you know, Carl and I sat down. That's my husband. If you haven't seen him lately, just wave to him and say hi. He works on Sundays sometimes. We talked about what this congregation means to us. You know, we are ready to put our treasure where our heart is. And in celebration of UUC's 50th anniversary, what it means to us, we're gonna raise our pledge over 5% this year because we believe in this congregation. And, and I'm not saying that every person is able to do 5% and we want to be a place where anybody, any circumstance feels welcome and loved and can participate in this community but I just want you to know that I care. You know, I, I'm so grateful that you called me to be your minister. I'm grateful that we can support Sean Copenhaver as our AV tech. We, we didn't have an AV tech. God, the tech volunteers are like, thank you. And we have Chrissy Ammon now, thanks to our support of the music program. We have year round religious exploration programming, thanks to your pledge and your support. So many of you, thank you for how you spend your time, your talent, and money. And let's give a, another shout out for 50 years. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.